Good morning. Today we will be doing text. So what is text? In information technology, the text is a human readable sequence of characters and the words that they form that can be encoded in, into computable, computer readable formats. The text is usually distinguished from non-character encoded data, such as graphic images in the forms of bitmaps and program codes, which is commonly known as binary. Here we have an example of the two most common types of text, which is serif and sans serif, which Marvin will be discussing later. Where and how is text used in multimedia? The text is an important component used in many multimedia applications. There are characters that are used to create words, sentences, paragraphs, and interests to the subject, relevant in all multimedia aspects, as text alone provides a source of information and is good at providing basic to complicated information. It is the simplest and often the most effective way to get, to get one's message across. It is needed when information needs to be delivered or shown as it provides a direct message to the reader. Insufficient attention to the presentation and flow of text within a multimedia application can result to the failure to communicate the presentation's central message. Relevance in multimedia production today. The text gives our, the text gives our ideas a precision that we can rarely approach with images alone. It plays the central role in being the only data that we can say with certainly that search engines can understand perfectly. Web typography is the area where pure text and visual visualization overlaps. Wise font choices improve text readability, but also changes the voice that delivers a message. Um, in this example, the first, uh, the first example, data display regular, rep um, gives a more heartfelt and comforting effect due to, due to the thickness, curves, and serif, whilst the black gothic at the bottom evokes a more commanding and abrupt message due to the boldness and emphasis on straight, strong lines. Additionally, typography color and size increases its psychological and emotional impact. Thus, typography elements attract visitors' attention as images do and carry all necessary information that text provides. All right, here we have examples of text using movies um, to yeah, set, the, set the atmosphere and um, foreshadow what's, what's to occur in the film. Thank you, Josh. So um, I will be doing fonts. So in font, we're doing serif, sans serif, and decorative fonts. So in typography, the term serif is in relation to the little strokes that can be found at the end of the main horizontal and the vertical strokes of the letter, shown here, here, and here. Um, the types of serifs can generally be categorized and described as hairline, square, wedged, or unbracketed and bracketed. So starting off with hairline serifs. So these are much thinner than the main strokes. Um, here, the thin hairline serifs are presented near the upper and bottom part of the letter C. Um, they are also shown on the horizontal line, both on top and the bo and bottom of the letter L and I. The addition of these hairline serifs adds an elegance and chic aesthetic towards the words it is applied to. Next, we have slab. So these are thicker than hairline serifs and are of a heavier weight than the main strokes. Through the example, we can identify that the serif is much thicker than hairline strokes. In some cases, the serif can also be a heavier weight than the main stroke. This type of serif adds a dominant quality towards it as it is quite loud to the eye. Next, we have wedged. Um, these serifs are triangular in shape. Um, shown through the example, the serif presented is an example um, of a more triangular um, serif. This effect creates a more structural quality to the text as a whole. Then we have bracketed versus unbracketed. So unbracketed, um, these serifs attach directly to the strokes of the letter form, sometimes abruptly or at right angles. Next we have bracketed, so these serifs provide a curved transition between the serif and the main stroke. Uh, <laughs> through the image, we can identify that the left is bracketed and the transition from the serif to the main stroke is curved. However, on the right, it is attached at right um, angles, meaning it is bracketed. Okay, so we have um, sans serifs. So sans serif text is a typeface without serifs. This differs from serif typefaces as they do not have decorative elements along the central beams and on the top and bottom of the vertical and horizontal strokes. The word serif also means without in French. 
Sans serif is simplistic in its design and is typically used for emphasis, as the clean and minimalistic qualities of this typeface enables the word to speak for itself. It also helps for the readability for banners, posters, and many forms of advertisements that would be seen from far away. As shown through these two examples, um, there are no serifs along the vertical and main horizontal um, strokes, classifying these as sans serif. When comparing which type of typeface is best suited for certain um, platforms, the following image indicates where serifs and sans serifs should be used for main body of text. On the left, serifs are recommended for hard copy prints. This is due to the horizontal lines which aid in the fluidity and readability of the text as one word effortlessly flows from word to word. For web text, sans serifs are recommended as serifs may create distortion and impact the clarity of each word. Then decorative. So decorative text such as Pacifico should never be used for main body of text as it can be very hard to read in large amounts and at a small scale. The decorative text differs from serif text as even though it has extra bits sticking out, those elements are not designed to make the text easier to read. Instead, they are there to add an aesthetic quality that is not usually present, present in other fonts. This, also, this is also useful for drawing attention to itself. Hence, decorative fonts, hence decorative fonts um, are more suitable for short phrases and headers. So I'm going to be talking about formatting. First up is bold text, which is thicker text, normally used for emphasis uh, and headings. Uh, it's especially useful for slowing down the reader when there's a large body of text. Uh, usually it emphasizes that word so that the reader slows down and they can focus on that word. However, it shouldn't be used for the whole main body of the text because <clears throat> it slows down the fluidity and readability Italics is slanted text that when it's used in main body text, it's either representing thoughts or movie titles, book titles, uh, or game titles or other kinds of titles. Uh, it's, it's also used for emphasizing uh, because it's different. It's notice, noticeably different from uh, regular formatted text. An underline is a straight line under text also used for emphasis and even headings. Uh, it's also used to draw attention to, to the specific text that it's underlining uh, and are also used for hyperlinks. There are th four main types of alignment, left, center, right, and justified text. Left alignment is the, uh, when the text is aligned to the left of the page, central to the center, and right to the right. Justified text is a little bit different because it sp evenly spreads the text along the size that you want it, uh, and it just allows you to have a more clean design, usually used in portfolios. Central alignment is most common in headings for portfolios or newspaper articles or online web articles. This is an example of the buttons that you would click to select each type of alignment. Numbers. For general writing, most, write most guides agree that you should use words for numbers one through nine, but for larger numbers, the rules vary wildly from style to style. Typically, people who write business or technical documents are more likely to use numbers liberally, whereas people who write less technical documents are more likely to write out the words for numbers. If someone handles numbers a different way than you do, you're probably using a different style guide so it's advised to pick a style and stick with it when it makes sense. Font size is very important. Because the size of text 
helps to communicate the use of it. Larger text tends to be used for headings and titles, whereas smaller text is used for subheadings, subtitles, and even smaller text is used for the main body. A typical body size, a typical body text size, such as that required for our major project portfolios is 12 point in 12 times New Roman or an equivalently sized font. Color represents the color of the text. There are different meanings for colors of text, such as red can mean words such as active, exciting, physical, and represents brands such as Kellogg's, Coca-Cola, Nintendo, Lego, Pinterest, and so on. Whereas green usually represents the environment and growth and can be used for brands such as Tic Tacs or BP. Headings and subheadings. Uh, a sub subheadings are a category, a subcategory of the headings and follow the same basic rules as headings do. Because headings in a text document uh, allow us to categorize sections. Subheadings allow us to categorize, categorize the sections within the headings. The first, so there's different kinds of headings. Sections, uh, smaller, you'd use smaller text for major topics, smaller text for minor topics, and finally, even smaller text for subtopics. An example heading, you could have bold, centered text, or uppercase. You could even combine them. Uh, this one is a combination. Oh, no, it's just centered text and uppercase. Yep. Finally, we have pagination, uh, which is just where uh, it refers to the number of the page. So in relation to the spine of the book, you could have the page number up the top, bottom, top center, bottom center, or to the bottom left. Typically not up in the top left because that's, I don't know why, <laughs> not common. Uh, and finally, pagination does not, is not a made up word about imagination and pages. Uh, but it allows you to more easy, easily navigate the document. Uh, that's it. Thank you.